Good morning, folks, and welcome to This Week in AI. A lot has gone down. NVIDIA and TSMC are set to unveil the first Blackwell chip wafer made in the US. Russia wants Elon Musk to build a tunnel, and social media platforms like X are seeing declining usage compared to AI tools like ChatGPT. So let's get into it. And here's what I was talking about. This is X versus ChatGPT from similar web data. This is daily active users in 2025. ChatGPT has just about doubled their users since the beginning of this year. And you can see that X active users are on the decline. If you're wondering why ChatGPT's chart is so up and down, it's because ChatGPT daily active users see a big drop on the weekends. And also some news pertaining to X this week that X will soon be displaying every user's country of origin on their public profiles. Maybe this will allow you to curate your algorithm to show you only posts that come from a certain country. And this week, Sam Altman announced some pretty big updates coming to ChatGPT. He said, we made ChatGPT pretty restrictive to make sure we were being careful with mental health issues. We realized this made it less useful to many users who had no mental health problems, but given the seriousness of the issue, we wanted to get this right. Now that we have been able to mitigate the serious mental health issues and have new tools, we are going to be able to safely relax the restrictions in most cases. In a few weeks, we plan to put out a new version of ChatGPT that allows people to have a personality that behaves more like what people liked about 4.0 and we hope this will be better. If you want ChatGPT to respond in a very human-like way or use a ton of emojis or act like a friend, ChatGPT should do it, but only if you want it. Anyways, in December, as we roll out age gating more fully and as part of our treat adults users like adults, sorry, treat adult users like adults principle, we will allow even more like erotica for verified adults. So ChatGPT is getting sexy. So Mark Cuban quoted this and he said, this is going to backfire hard. No parent is going to trust that their kids can't get through your age gating. They will just push their kids to every other large language model. Why take the risk? Same for schools, why take the risk? A few seniors in high school are 18 and decide it would be fun to show the hardcore erotica they created to the 14-year-olds. What could go wrong? But this week, OpenAI also announced that they're designing their own chips now. They said, we're taking what we've learned from building frontier models and bringing it directly into the hardware. Building our own hardware in addition to our other partnerships will help us all meet the world's growing demand for AI. And some of the executives get together on this podcast and discuss how open AI design chips will power the world's growing AI demand. And one of those partnerships materialized this week. Open AI announced they're partnering with Broadcom to deploy 10 gigawatts of chips designed by open AI. On that news, Broadcom stock surged over 13% and it moved up over $200 billion in market cap on the day. And so open AI has now signed multi-billion dollar deals with the US government Stargate for $500 billion. Nvidia for 100 billion, AMD for up to 100 billion, Intel for 25 billion, TSMC for 20 billion, Microsoft for 13 billion, Oracle for 10 billion, and now Broadcom. The world's fastest growing nonprofit will soon be ingrained in every US tech giant. But readers added context saying that OpenAI's Stargate is not a deal with the US government. Stargate has multiple partners, but mainly Oracle and SoftBank. And this week, Meta announced that their next state-of-the-art data center in El Paso, Texas, will have the ability to scale to one gigawatt. This new data center will help us deliver top-tier AI models and product experiences as we build towards super intelligence. It looks like they're investing about $1.5 billion into that project. And news this week that XAI is reportedly securing a $20 billion lease to own deal for NVIDIA GPUs to lock in long-term inference capacity. It's also forming a joint venture with Solaris Energy to build one gigawatt power plant to feed it. And also this week, a consortium led by BlackRock, Global Infrastructure Partners, and the UAE's MGX is acquiring a US-based aligned data centers for $40 billion with NVIDIA, Microsoft, and Elon's XAI as key partners. And so the trillion dollar question remains, how will we generate enough energy to power all of these AI deals? The US Department of Energy says US data centers will use 325,000 to 580,000 gigawatt hours of power per year by 2028. That's equivalent to the power used by 40 million homes, all on just data centers. Currently, nuclear power is viewed as the only solution to the impending power shortage. The average nuclear power plant can produce 8,000 gigawatt hours per year. In other words, we would need 73 plants new to power 580,000 gigawatt hour data centers. However, here's the problem. The U.S. added two nuclear reactors since 1995 and it takes over 10 years to build one. Reaching the required energy output by 2028 seems close to impossible at our current rate. So something must change. 
And David Sachs was recently speaking on the AI race. And he said all of these new data centers that are going in, they need tremendous power. So getting ahead of the curve on energy, making sure we stand up all of this new infrastructure we're going to need to basically produce these AI factories. We want the US technology stack to dominate globally. We want to be the partner of choice for the whole world. And I think everyone in Silicon Valley understands that the way that you win a technology race is to have the biggest ecosystem. You just want everybody to be building on top of your technology stack. And that's what we want for the United States. And as I showed last week, technology and tech related stocks now encapsulate a record 56% of the entire stock market. Defensive stocks are looking like they're at an all time low in terms of their market share of the entire stock market. And tech's 56% share is 5 percentage points higher than the 2000 dot com bubble peak. And it's been a bad year for stock pickers. Only 22% of active funds beat the market. That's poised for the worst annual showing in decades. And Adam says the reason is that the many fund managers predicted that the market would continue to collapse in April as they anticipated a recession due to Trump's tariffs. They sold out of the market in April and shorted stocks and missed the 39% rebound. And in the meantime, gold has officially become the first asset in history to hit $30 trillion in market cap. And despite Bitcoin being at the highest prices it's ever been, its search interest over time has still not gotten back to the 2017 and 2021 peaks. And while gold sits at $30 trillion asset value, the market cap of crypto just exceeded a record $4 trillion. And 75% of investors still have zero exposure to crypto. And meanwhile, the US housing market has reached its most unaffordable level in history. And Gavin Newsom decided to blame Donald Trump for that. But surprisingly, the US just posted a massive surplus of almost $200 billion for the month of September. Their total receipts were $544 billion and their total outlays were $346 billion. They collected $30 billion in tariffs in the month of September. Elon is going to like to see this. And Shamath said, wow. And speaking of Elon, Russia has reportedly asked him to help build a $65 billion undersea rail tunnel linking Russia and Alaska. The tunnel would be named the Putin Trump Tunnel. And this week when Elon was at the SpaceX factory watching Starship Flight 11 delivering some Starlink simulators to space, Jensen stopped by to deliver him the new NVIDIA supercomputer called the DGX. It's a desktop supercomputer that has a petaflop of performance. And this is symbolic because Jensen delivered the very first NVIDIA supercomputer called the DGX1 to Elon in 2016, back when Elon was at OpenAI. But this one's about five times more powerful than that one was. And the Google CEO reports an exciting milestone for AI in science. He says our cell to sentence scale 27 billion parameter foundation model built with Yale and based on Gemma generated a novel hypothesis about cancer cellular behavior which scientists experimentally validated in living cells. With more preclinical and clinical tests, this discovery may reveal a promising new pathway for developing therapies to fight cancer. Again, we're not there yet. He said this discovery may reveal a promising new pathway for developing therapies to fight cancer. But there's hope. And also at Google, VO is getting a major upgrade. We're rolling out VO 3.1, our updated video generation model alongside improved creative controls for filmmakers, storytellers and developers, many of them with audio. Wow, I would like to play around with this. Demis Asabis says VO3 is the state of the art in video models. VO3.1 is our new big upgrade with enhanced realism, richer audio, scene extension, better narrative control, more precise editing capabilities, and much more. Enjoy creating. And Demis also said that riding in a Waymo autonomous vehicle is an amazing futuristic experience straight out of science fiction. So excited to see the service coming to my hometown in London. I can't wait for Londoners to try them out soon. Hello, London. Waymo to London in 2026. And Unitree dropped a new video of their robot doing Kung Fu. And I actually posted this on my channel as a short this week. And pretty much everybody thought it was fake. But yeah, here's the proof posted by Unitree's official account on X. And today Apple revealed the new 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M5 chip, delivering the next big leap in AI performance on the Mac. This would blew my mind. I bought the M2 MacBook Pro 
just like two years ago. So to see that they're already at the M5, I was like, what? But I, I looked it up and the M2 came out in 2022. I just happened to buy it in 2023. And in a massive victory for President Trump, chip makers NVIDIA and TSMC are announcing their first ever American-made wafer. The investments are pouring in just as promised. TSMC Arizona is expected to create thousands of high-tech jobs and attract a broad ecosystem of suppliers, the company said. It's going to be a black well chip. It's good in case China invades Taiwan. And last weekend, there was some worries about Trump's relationship with China. But then things sort of panned out. Investors woke up to some major news from the U.S. The Trump administration officials are now saying the U.S.-China relationship is good. And the U.S. Treasury Secretary went live on TV saying that 100% tariffs on China don't have to happen. It seemed like there was a misunderstanding over the weekend that sparked all of the fear. And now Trump administration officials are already teasing that 100% tariffs on China likely won't go into effect. And the Kobesi letter says record highs are on the horizon. But that's not me saying that. I'm not not saying it, I'm just choosing not to give financial advice. And I saw this post this week and I thought it was important to put onto your radar if you are interested in humanoid robots and investing in that theme. DLR researchers gave a robotic arm full body touch sensitivity with no artificial skin needed. As you can see, they put their fingers on the different metal parts of the arm. And as you can see in this display here, the, the robotic arm can feel it. Enabling the intrinsic robotic sense of touch without use of any artificial skins or tactile instrumentation can revolutionize physical human robot interaction. Based on high resolution joint force torque sensing and a redundant arrangement and fully integrated within the robot mechanical structure, multiple simultaneous contacts can be robustly identified and localized in real time, which can be achieved dynamically through the entire robotic structure. Through a momentum-based monitoring method to purely extract the external physical interactions, we were able to let the robot sensitively feel the surrounding environment and accurately localize touch trajectories in space and time that have been applied on its surface by a human. Contacts can be applied to arbitrary places on the robot body and irrespective of the joint configuration. This is enabled by the underlying fusion of multiple sensor signals by means of the dynamically decoupled momentum-based monitoring approach. This makes the estimation of contacts independent from the robot's configuration and unaffected by singularities. We shift the scope of using contact forces applied to a robotic structure beyond their conventional use and present an intuitive method for physical human-robot communication and interaction by simply touching the surface of the robot. Thanks to the effective fusion of model-based and machine learning algorithms, we can use the whole body of the robot as a tactile sensor. Furthermore, we show that our concept of the so-called virtual buttons can implement the tactile communication link in a straightforward fashion, including switches and slider bars, which are complementary to speech, hardware buttons, or control panels. The buttons can be freely designed and attached to the robot surface and directly mapped to motion commands. This opens up new opportunities in terms of intuitive and flexible interaction between human and robot. Now, I'm not sure how much these internal force torque sensors would cost and if it would be smart to include in a humanoid robot that's designed to be produced at scale. Chris says that this technique would only work for a robot that's bolted in place because once you apply it to a non-stationary system, reliability collapses. The moment you add movement to a multi-joint setup, you are in a three-body problem territory and small mechanical or environmental shifts completely distort the computation. And AJ says, I can't share details, but Tesla is using something comparable in Optimus. Several months ago, a semiconductor supplier was asked to make a rather unusual component that nobody was using in automotive. At the time, the spec made no sense, but this explains it. Optimus will be wild. So I can't tell you anything for certainty, but I just wanted to put this little development on your radar. So guys, that was the big news of the week. I decided to title the series This Week in AI. I know that I go over a lot of things that are not pertaining to AI. I talked about gold, I talked about Bitcoin, etc. But I can't use the title This Week in Tech because somebody owns that name. So I decided on This Week in AI. And yeah, every week there's just so much to talk about. So I'm really excited about this series. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next Saturday. <laughs>